Hi, I'm Alan Irwin from Santa Barbara Infrared. And in this test, we're going to be looking at bad pixel analysis. There's no standardized name for this test, so we're going to refer to it as gain, offset, and bad pixel analysis, and that's usually referred to by its abbreviation, GOBP. So, what is a bad pixel measurement? Well, what we're trying to determine is whether a focal plane, the sensor itself, is acceptable, whether it passes our set of criteria. So we've established a set of criteria for every pixel in that focal plane, and we're going to analyze those pixels to determine whether they fit within our criteria. So this would be a standard pixel map, a bad pixel map, where we've identified all the bad pixels. And identifying those bad pixels is really part of this whole test. What is the criteria that defines the bad pixels? But this would be a map of those bad pixels in the overall field of view of the camera, or at least in the range of interest. So how do we determine a bad pixel? Well, there are four criteria that are typically used for bad pixel analysis. The gain on that pixel, the offset for that pixel, noise on the pixel, and whether or not the pixel blinks. Now, additionally, you can determine whether a pixel is stuck high or low, and that may be in your specification, but really that's just a part of the other criteria and comes out of that analysis. Here you see a graph of the results of the gain measurement on a set of pixels. This is all the pixels in a region of interest or on the focal plane. And we've measured the gain on each, and because we have a large population, we show that with this histogram. Now ideally, they'd all be exactly the same. You'd have one tall bar with all the pixels, but realistically they're not. So we have this range of values that are uh, part of the measurement of the system. We need to determine what the acceptable criteria is, what pixels are within our acceptable range, based on taking the mean of this measurement and determining plus or minus 5%, 10%, whatever our criteria is, the range of values based on that mean that we are going to accept. And any pixels that fall outside of that range are failed in terms of their gain. Similarly, we're going to do this with the offset and with the noise on each pixel. And finally, we'll do a measurement on whether or not that pixel has ever blinked or not. So each pixel is going to get measured in terms of those four criteria to determine an overall set of failed pixels from which we can do some basic statistical analysis. What's the percentage of good pixels and the percentage of bad pixels? And in some cases, that's a good enough measurement. But typically, we're then going to move on into the next level of analysis, which is to take those candidate pixels and determine their clusters, how they are connected. So here you'll see an image of a cluster. And this is either one or two clusters, because they are pixels that are touching each other, they're connected. The question is whether they are diagonally connected. Well, they are, but whether or not that's part of our criteria for determining a cluster. And in some cases, diagonal connectivity is part of a cluster, so this would be one. Other cases, it's not, so this would be two clusters, and that's just part of the specification. So now you have the clusters in terms of their size, so you know the set of clusters you have, how many of them, and how big they are. The next part of the potential criteria is where they are in the image. Because in terms of image analysis, where a bad pixel set or cluster appears has more of an impact. Within the middle 50%, clusters have a big impact on the visual quality. Outside of that, it may not be as important. And so we are more forgiving of clusters and failed pixels that occur outside of that center part of a focal plane array. And so that criteria can be defined in different ways. Uh, maybe within the middle 50%, you can have no clusters, but you're okay with one or two clusters up to 95%. And outside of that, you can have as many clusters as you want. It doesn't matter. Entirely depends on that manufacturer's set of criteria for that device. So how do we go about doing this test? Well, in this case, we actually need a calibrated source because we're going to be measuring the gain on these pixels. It's similar to what we're doing with SITF. So we use a calibrated black body, and we are going to present that black body's radiation at two different temperatures. So we can do this either in a flood fashion, where we put the black body right up against the camera, or we can do it in a projected system where we project out that image in a known area so we know what part of the uh, camera we're illuminating at a given time. We're going to set a series of images to be collected at two different temperatures. And we take that series of images at the two temperatures, one, so that we can average them to determine the gain on that pixel based on those two temperatures, but also so within a single temperature, we're going to look at that pixel's value over time to determine its noise, temporal noise, but the noise on that pixel. We are also going to be looking at that pixel over time to determine whether or not at any image, it goes outside of an acceptable criteria. And if it does, then that pixel has blinked. So we'll set a range of acceptable values. If the pixel goes out even for one image, that pixel has blinked. 
So now we'll go through and determine the values from each of these pixels, see whether those values sit within our set, uh, then analyze the clustering of those pixels to determine all the clusters and their sizes, and then look at the position to determine whether or not they fit within our, our overall criteria. These, this criteria can get very complicated. You can have it be something like you can't have any pixels within the middle 50%. From 50% to 95%, you're allowed to have clusters of up to three, but you can't have any more than two of those clusters outside of that area, you're allowed to have five of up to size eight. As you can see, it can get very complicated. It just depends on the manufacturer and how it's applied. So uses of this. Well, as I've mentioned, you use it to characterize a camera, determine whether it passes your criteria. You can do some calibration because you can correct for some bad images. You're also going to be using it to compare different cameras to determine which one is a better quality. And to a limited degree, you can compare cameras from different model runs. You're really just determining the quality of the camera, whether it's a high-end camera where you're not allowing any uh, defects, or whether it's an inexpensive camera where you're expecting certain defects. And that's how gain offset bad pixel is applied.